Hello, Eight of Cups family. Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to Virgo season, guys. Um, we've got a lot going on in the skies this month. September is another intense month, although not quite as jarring and intense as August was. Um, we are still dealing with the calamity of the things that occurred in August. You know, the Uranus station is still um, very prominent in our sky, as well as the second full moon in Aquarius. And when we move into Virgo season, um, and especially as we have Venus moving through the sign of Libra the first half of the month, um, our attention is really going to be turned towards our ability to have compassion. Now looking at the current state of things in this world and my condolences and my whole heart goes out to the troops that were um, sacrificed in Afghanistan and praying that the rest of these people can get home safely. Um, we kind of have to look at ourselves as a nation and as humanity and really lean on our ability to have compassion. Now, the tricky part of Virgo energy is to have compassion without judgment. And a lot of this month is going to be us being compelled to say, yeah, but they should have done this. Yeah, but they should have done that. And there has to reach a culmination point for us in which we can accept where we are right now and how to proceed. This is in terms of mundane astrology, this is in terms of our current conditions as a collective, and it also plays out in our personal lives as well. Virgo energy can make you feel the need to perfect everything in your life. And that's not a really healthy place to be. I'm allowed to say this because I'm a Virgo with a Virgo stellium, so I'm very familiar with where these perfectionism um, obsessions can lie in our lives. And quite honestly, when we spend a lot of time focusing on everything that is wrong, it's really hard to maintain, maintain that high vibrational energy that helps us to accomplish, that helps us to manifest, that helps us to bring peace into our personal lives and therefore create peace throughout the collective. So it's a little bit of a duality. The good thing about Virgo energy is that it's always fair. It, um, and especially as we approach this new moon in Virgo and the full moon in Pisces, uh, there's a lot of energy into our gifts as humans, into the compassion that we can have for other people and our ability to put ourselves in other people's shoes and truly understand where they are coming from. And I think this energy will allow us to make some pretty big breakthroughs as far as dropping some of the animosity that we have and coming together for the greater good. Now my hope in all of this and what I, I truly hope we could all reach within the next couple weeks, at least the first half of this Virgo season, is the quality of time that we spend in our lives doing the things that we love with the people that we love. There's an emphasis on relationships here. There's an emphasis on the other people in our lives and the roles that they play. Now, I always look at Virgo season as so appropriate when we look at the way that we're developed, you know, the way that at least us on the, in the Western Hemisphere, Norman, Nor Northern Hemisphere, you know, it's back to school time. So we're getting back into our routines and Virgo really loves a routine. Um, we're also probably, in terms of health, we're looking at the, the COVID variants and you know there's probably a lot more fear amping up throughout our environments again. And so the Virgo energy can talk to you about getting right as far as your nutrition and taking care of your body, exercising, taking the proper vitamins, eating the right foods, um, eating cleaner foods, not relying so much on fast food. The beauty of the mutability of Virgo is that we are transitioning from one season into the next. We are transitioning from the fun and wild summer into a more sober and responsible time of year. But it's also a time in which we start to prepare for some of the more traditional sides of life, right? Now the kids go back to school, we start talking about schedules and plans and, and fall plans and what are we going to do for the holidays. And Virgo is all about the planning. 
So it's a great opportunity for us to get organized in our lives. It's a great opportunity to clean out some of the old stuff in our houses, in our minds, in our bodies, and to get a little bit clearer and stronger in what we want to do next. It's a great time to set goals. And because Venus is in Libra, it's a great time to implement friendships you know it's a great time to say to your friend hey let's start um, a walking routine let's go for a walk three times a week with a best friend because not only do we need that mutual um, companionship but it also kind of helps to hold us accountable so there's strength in that this month as well now we've got Mars moving through Virgo. This is a lot about the military stuff that's going on. You're going to see this playing out for a few more weeks. Of course, you're going to see this playing out for the rest of the year. But um, things will remain kind of in a heightened state for a few more weeks as Mars makes its way through Virgo. And then finally moves into Libra, which um, has its own set of interesting factors. But again, leaning towards companionship, leaning towards um, being fair to all and being honest. So we're looking at a couple more decent months before we roll into November and December, which again really pump up the anxiety, they really pump up the intensity. So I urge all of you, if you are able to rest in September, please do so. Please honor your body, honor your minds, honor yourself. It's a great time to learn to love yourself for where you are and what you have in your life. And be grateful because when we're on the Virgo Pisces axis, this is all about the service that we do for others, the sacrifices that we make in the name of love, and what we are able to give. And so each of our attention should be put towards that in some way, whether we are packing lunches for our children or um, you know just really enjoying our, our partners and our friends and, and the loves in our life and, and cherishing those things and being grateful for them um, being grateful for our homes organizing them taking care of them closing up that yard work getting ready for the fall it's an amazing time of year and i do wish you guys all the very best in the month of september and we will get started with your monthly videos Enjoy, guys. Hi, Cancer. Welcome to Eight of Cups Tarot and welcome to your cards for September. Honestly, this is the second time I'm shooting your video. I actually, um, I did it the first time and it felt jumbled and disconnected. I was kind of lost in the energy and then later on throughout the day as it was kind of just still sitting with me, um, I just knew I had to revisit it. And so let's get into this. You are coming out this month as a king of pentacles, super grounded. And for some reason, I know it's, it's a card of Taurus representing the earth sign, having a lot to do with like your stability, right? But I also think it's in terms of an investment. And I'm starting to wonder, which maybe is not what I kind of picked up on the first reading. I'm starting to wonder if you being the King of Pentacles is really symbolic of the growth that you've had. Now let's not forget that we have Pluto in Capricorn, your opposing um, placement, so seventh house descendant you've been through it when it comes to relationships partnerships the way that these things play out in your life any type of legal contract so it doesn't necessarily have to be love can also be business related but it's suffice to say that you've learned so much and really that whole saturn pluto conjunction of 2020 
was really about that mastery, right? Honing into that opposite sign of yours in Capricorn where you achieve climbing the mountain and now forever you are able to apply the wisdom. And so I got this feeling from the King of Pentacles that we were moving into a time where your stability, your security has become so much more sacred to you. Now, for some of you, that might mean very different things. I mean, for some of you, could this could just be your financial stability, your career, your job. But looking at the transits that we're going through, Mercury is going to spend an extended amount of time in your fourth house. And this is kind of making a square to that Pluto in your seventh. And it feels as though Cap or Cancer is mastering um, this transformation process. I'm finding the sacred in the strength because the King of Pentacles is never impulsive. He always makes wise investments. He always works for the greater good of all. He appears stable and reliable to the people that he loves and that he works for. You know, even in this picture, we have a dog that kind of symbolizes like the idea of loyalty. And I think you're starting to see that this is something you bring to the table. And when I look at this energy, I pick up a very pure heart. This is somebody who knows that they have a lot to offer not needing to flaunt it in any way you know there's nothing flashy about this there's just a surety and a strength behind it and a confidence and i look at this king of pentacles sitting right here next to this two of cups and to me this two of cups represents something very precious in your life now for some of you, this is a physical union of some kind, a relationship that you share. It doesn't necessarily have to be romantic love, although for some of you, very much so is. But it's a partnership. It is a soul connection in, it, in that way that the person you're sharing these experiences with is kind of acting as a mirror. You're starting to see yourself in another person or another situation and you're feeling the integration of your wisdom and oftentimes i see this when we start to you know enter into an energy where we raise our vibration we we have a better quality relationship with ourselves and that's what we begin to attract is those other people that have already had that growth that can meet you where you're at because it is an equal now I wouldn't always say that if this wasn't a king of pentacles, meaning in your integrity. But because it is, I think that this represents another very high standard individual opportunity in your life. Could be a job that you've always dreamed of. It could be the perfect partner. It could be a relationship you have with your child or a best friend. But this relationship or situation is there to show you a lot about who you are. And this is oftentimes what happens when we start to see ourselves through other people's eyes. Now, sometimes when we get into this energy, oftentimes there is a four of wands in reverse involved. This doesn't surprise me. This doesn't worry me. This doesn't concern me whatsoever. What I see here is cold feet and doubt. And I say that because we have this Queen of Swords, we have this Mercury card, we've got this Three of Swords over here. And there seems to be some mental chatter. Yes, you're going to feel this as Mercury spends nearly 60 entire days in your fourth house of emotions. There's going to be a lot of reassessing what do I want what do I need is this good for me and remember you're coming out as a king of pentacles so there's no rush there's no impulsivity here because what you want to build is high quality 
strong foundation long-term investments. And because we have this Queen of Swords here, which is my Queen of Discernment, right? This is that logical mind that we're, we go into sometimes when we're in situations in our life. We start to approach things very logically, you know? And a lot of times the Queen of Swords will take into concern maybe what other people want or other people's advice. Now, of course, the Queen of Swords can also be a little bit cold, right? Sometimes I pick up on her energy, not all the time, but sometimes I pick it up as kind of like the Ice Queen. And she has her back turned to this King of Pentacles. She has her back turned to the Four of Wands in reverse, kind of almost oblivious to the situation at hand. Now, I'm not quite sure that this is you or that this is your energy, this Queen of Swords. And for some of you, it might be. This just might be an old habit where you slip back into doubt, probably that kind of doubt that comes from old fears, old rejections, old failures, you know, like whatever emotional baggage that we're still carrying. Because remember, in order to change, we got to drop all the baggage. In order to drop all the baggage, we have to actually look at the baggage. And I feel like for some of you, this Queen of Swords is going to be like this alternative. See, there, there's two different sides of this situation. Like when you're in it, when you're experiencing it, I'll, I'll get a little bit further into that in a second. But when you're really feeling this connection or this thing that's really feeling great to you at the moment, when you're there, it feels wonderful. And then... Maybe distance or time goes by and you start to get in your head about things. And the Queen of Swords can detect that this is actually a pattern. You know, because she uses her discernment, because she is wise, she's queen status. So, and it's more of a feminine, compassionate energy with the Queen of Swords. In a way, it does indicate that a lot of progress can be made here because every time that you start to feel unstable, as we often do when really beautiful, wonderful things come in our lives, because we know that we have to change. We know that we have to step up. We have to be a good person, you know, not just in the good way, but like, and Virgo season is all about like the cleaning up our act a little bit. And when you see a quality person, one of the best things that happens to us is that we immediately want to become the best version of ourselves. And it might mean that there's life changes that need to be made, adjustments that need to be made, things that need to happen that kind of throw off your stability in some way. And when we get to those places in life, oftentimes it's certainly not unusual where we start to kind of weigh the options, right? Like, is this really worth the effort? Is this worth the sacrifice? Is this worth the changes I have to make? Is it worth the chaos that could step into my life? Now, I say that because a Queen of Swords comes out next to your environment. I have to tell you guys, I like never, ever, ever pull these cards in reverse. But they actually flew out of the deck and spun around perfectly. And I also don't typically pick two of these, but these came out together. The Justice card has been coming out a lot, especially with the set. This isn't the first time that it's come out with this card. I kind of really wanted to take that into consideration because see with this Queen of Swords, the mental place that we go as we're processing, you know, here's like the heart and then here's the head. We have the Tower card in reverse and the Justice card in the reverse. And if this is your energy, the Queen of Swords, there's a resistance to change, which is ultimately the Tower card. If you are suddenly falling in love with somebody, you know, most likely this is kind of you starting to have those freak out moments. Like this is gonna change everything. Maybe there's plans or situations that you had that maybe have to be sacrificed or broken in some way. But either way, and it's not unusual when the big things come into our life, 
we kind of have to grab them. We kind of have to be all in. And that's what I see with this King of Pentacles. I see you weighing an investment. Are you all in or not? Now, for some of you, this Queen of Swords represents another person. And this could be, and it could represent a prominent person in your life, probably somebody who's giving you a lot of advice, right? Queen of Swords represents communication. We have the Mercury card here. We have the Three of, three of Swords. This could be another person in your life that's giving you advice. Like, mm, you know, maybe this thing isn't such a great idea. Now, she's upright. And I don't pick up like an icky, jealousy kind of vibe. But it is a reminder that most people in our lives will give us advice or have an opinion based on how it affects their lives. Now, we've all kind of been in those situations where, you know, like you're young and single and free and you like have all this time in the world to be with all of your friends. And then suddenly you fall in love with somebody, you meet somebody and these other people are like, what the heck, man, you're like not around anymore. You don't care about us anymore, like that kind of stuff. And it can go a little deeper, you know. If this is like maybe a coworker or a current boss, but you found a brand new career or something of your dreams and this person's like, eh, I don't know, it sounds like a terrible risk. You should probably just stay where you're at. Like I said, it's not a negative energy as much as it's more convenient for this person if you avoid these changes. But let's not forget how influential the Queen of Swords truly is. Be it your own inner voice or that of people around you. Fourth house transit, it could represent a mother or a sister or a female person in your life that's kind of giving you advice that may be stirring up some feelings of delaying the actual coming together or, com you know, because my Four of Wands oftentimes rep represents kind of like a commencement a celebration, solidifying something, taking a relationship up a notch, you know, making some form of a commitment, making it public, you know, whatever it is. You might have somebody in your, either in your thoughts or in your life that's kind of making you doubt this thing. And I think ultimately the whole point of the month is to start to differentiate your heart from your head or your true authenticity and the things that you truly want as opposed to the people around you. That's kind of the theme that I'm picking up here. Now, right here, center of the card, we have the three of wands. I just want to point this out to you guys really, really quick, kind of the, sim the symbols within this reading. We have a Three of Wands here. We have the Three of Swords that came out for the underlying energy. And we have these two Three cards here. So that's literally four threes on the table. When I think of three, I think of creation, creativity. I think of how powerful our thoughts are and our manifestations. And if we focus on the wrong things, those things tend to manifest into real life. You, being the King of Pentacles, probably already know that. And so I see you here, current energy, Three of Wands, in this holding pattern. But I see it as the perfect pause. See, the thing about it is this kind of energy, like here we have this Two of Cups, the Ace of Cups, and the Eight of Pentacles. And the Eight of Pentacles is one of my absolute favorite cards. Um, and also you have the Wheel of Fortune here. This is a card much like the Wheel of Fortune. And this Wheel of Fortune is surrounded by two eights here. Eight being the number of eternity, sovereignty, knowing thyself. Also a reminder that you guys are experiencing the very tail end of Jupiter being retrograde in your eighth house. Jupiter only has about three more months to kind of solidify 
what it came to do in your eighth house, often representing sharing of resources, a sharing of your life. It could represent healing traumas and wounds and deep psychological subconscious things. So it's not a shallow house. And Jupiter does a lot of work here. It can bring you a lot of wealth. It can bring you a lot of luck. It can bring you a lot of abundance if you choose the correct partners. It could also do a lot of psychological damage and cause a lot of regret if you don't. And because we have Aquarius, Jupiter, and Saturn all together in your eighth house, the importance of, be, of integrity, I cannot explain enough to you. Now, the integrity isn't about doing what's right for the other people. The integrity is doing what's right for you. See, the thing is, this particular situation isn't just about this particular situation at all. This is a pattern in your life that's coming to an end. There's something symbolic about how of the wisdom that you've gained because I don't see this as being all that much of a challenge. Look, for a lot of you, September is going to be pretty much a normal month. But I think little by little, wheel of fortune, we're going to gain the courage and the momentum to just start to commit to the things that we truly want and desire in our heart and really get out of our own way. Now, by getting out of our own way, it's either getting out of our own head, stop you know, we stop nurturing those negative thoughts or it's about not seeking the advice of others. The Hierophant here does indicate to me this A, very spiritual lesson that you're on of discernment, your decision making. But because we have the Hierophant here with the Ace of Cups and the Three of Wands, see, the Ace of Cups is... Something profound being offered to you from a universe. It's, it's a gift and clearly it's an alignment, meaning you've manifested it. This was a wish that you put out for in the universe. Maybe, maybe it felt like it took a long time. Maybe it felt like it came out of the blue. Maybe this is something you weren't ready for. But I often say when an Ace of Cups is here in our lives, when these types of situations show up, you have to know there's a level of destiny involved. Again, a reminder, card number three, the creator. And the universe sometimes, especially Jupiter being retrograde, hands you that thing that almost seems too good to be true. And of course, there's a period of introspection. Of course, being the king of pentacles, again, there's no rush because you know this is a long-term investment. Now, the good news is I don't see a lot of pressure. The good news is I don't see the universe kind of pushing you. Here we have the tower in reverse, meaning that if things are in a transformation process, it's probably going to be a little bit gentler through the month of September at least. You know, I don't see a lot of jarring energy here. I just kind of see a gradual increase in your strength and determination to do what's right for you. And what I love, 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 my favorite thing about this reading right here is the Two of Cups, Ace of Cups, Eight of Pentacles. This kind of energy occurs again when something is truly meant for you because this is all about being in alignment. This is all about not only did you create this thought, did you create this job, this, this lover, this best friend, this opportunity. You created it and then you believed in it and then the universe came. And the Eight of Pentacles indicates that this is an easy flowing process. Like you don't have to put in a lot of work. This isn't stressful. This is the kind of thing you do when it's something that you love so much it doesn't feel like work at all, okay? If this is in terms of career work or some kind of a creative project, this is like the kind of thing that you can pour 12 hours into a day and it feels like you've 
been having fun all day. Like it's nothing that you would ever call work. If this is a relationship, there's no awkwardness. It's just so easy flowing. There's no drama. There's no fighting. It just flows. And it feels that way because it matches your vibration and it just kind of easily attracts each other. I also like the Eight of Pentacles because it's rather quiet. Like I said, it feels overall like September is a very quiet month. It's not a lot of drama here. And yet the progress probably a lot more than you could actually feel. You might feel this Three of Wands. You might feel like you're just in a state of waiting for this whole thing, like probably the timing to be right, things to go smoothly, people to accept it, building up the bravery to express yourself because there's definitely an element here of having the ability to express yourself, meaning that when somebody says to you, oh man, I don't know if that's right for you, you could look at them in the eye and just be sure of yourself and just say, well, I'll be the, the judge of that. I'm going to do what's best for me because most likely there's been experiences in your life where you did take advice from other people and not that those situations were horrible but probably wanting to do things a little bit differently this time. Remember this year is all about change. Now I talk about this flow here, this easy flow which means that even if there's stress around like wanting to either invest fully in this relationship or this opportunity, again, I say there's, there's very little pressure to make any decisions right now. And we have this card here of experiencing. Again, a card number three. And this card is really about being in the moment. And this is where your wisdom comes from. See, King of Pentacles is very earthy. Eight of Pentacles, very earthy energy, meaning we feel it in our bodies. And this card of experiencing is about being in the moment and understanding how you feel connected. Again, I'm going to go back to this being the perfect relationship it's not whether there's a future or where are we going with this. It's about what it's teaching you right now. And there's no doubt, and I think your gut is probably telling you, that regardless of the end result of this thing, it's very meant for you to experience, to enjoy if you could stay in the moment when you're doing this project or when you're with this person, if you could really allow yourself to be in the moment, to feel the gratitude and the ease and the comfort, this whole thing isn't a decision at all. And I don't really see a whole lot of choices here. It's just the universe waiting for you to decide justice card in reverse that you're worthy of going after this that you're worthy of going all in and because we have this four of wands three of wands and the wheel of fortune by the end of the month things will move forward gradually and with ease. And the hardest part is going to be allowing yourself to be yourself. This is you standing up for yourself, you standing up for yourself against those negative thoughts or against those negative people or anybody that tells you it's not possible. When we ascend in our life, 
there's certain versions of ourself we have to leave behind so that the better, stronger versions can emerge, right? It's kind of like when you're in school, like you start first grade and then you second grade and third grade and each year is a graduation process. And this situation is a graduation process. We're moving on from being that person that maybe got a little stuck in the negative thoughts or that person that maybe made too many compromises in order to keep the peace or not create chaos or change in other people's lives. Maybe you were somebody that tended to stay in situations you weren't really happy in for way too long because it was so uncomfortable for you to make other people uncomfortable. And then suddenly you wake up one day and you realize that life is really short. And when the universe gives you beautiful opportunities like this, you don't walk away from them. And at the end of the day, it is your happiness, your satisfaction, your loyalty to self that is more important than anything. This oracle card, Statue of Liberty. I am free to be who I really am. I have the right to my own happiness and sanctuary, and I am free to be authentic. I just don't think that other people's opinions are going to stand a chance. Last card out, card number 35, another card number eight, lost compass, getting back to integrity, very similar to this Wheel of Fortune card. And this talks about our ability to come home to ourselves, to be authentic in ourselves. Same here with, I am free to be authentic. And it suggests that for a time, maybe you were lost lost in other people's visions of who you are, who they needed you to be. Lost in the labels and the titles and the responsibilities. And I think 2021, you know, here we are going into the ninth month of the year, three quarters of it almost over. And time seems so critical now. Connections seem so critical now. Opportunities, our ability to spend our time doing what we love, being with the people that we love. In a five year, it becomes very, very clear that tomorrow is never promised. And that we have to make the best of today. So it's important to find your way home and who you are, your inner stability, what you truly want and desire. And then invest all in. When you know it's ready. And again, there's no pressure. The universe is just waiting for you to say, this is what I want. Even if it's crazy, even if it's off the wall, it's what you want. Guys, overall energy, three of wands, the world card. This is what I mean. We're closing out cycles. <laughs> Look at these cards. This whole situation has been a, an opportunity to heal. Three of Swords. An opportunity to heal, to rest our minds, to forgive, to forget, and to move forward. The World card, this is your new beginning. Knight of Swords, this is the ability to run towards it. The Star, healing, Queen of Cups love 
This is wishes coming true. This is everything at your doorstep as soon as you are brave enough to take it. And the universe is in no, heavy, no hurry. It's not going anywhere. Wow, really beautiful reading, guys. I'm really glad that I, uh, I, I revisited this one. Um, I do hope you guys have a wonderful September. And please remember to like, share, and subscribe the videos. Um, and if you comment, I will always, always comment back. I love to pick up on your energy because then I can bring it into further readings in the future. So feel free to comment if you can. Um, have a wonderful, wonderful month, guys. I love you so much.